Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video and today I'm finally going to be showing you guys my team update that I've been building from scratch. It's also one of the reasons why I haven't been uploading too much is because I have been focusing on building this team for quite a bit for the past six days so I haven't really been too focused onto YouTube and more of just actually playing the game. But if you're interested in buying some NHL coins, check out NHL Coin Market in the link in the description box below. Use Chops for a 5% discount. So before we start, I want to give you guys a little bit of a backstory of why I built this team. Uh, I felt like for some of my videos, I didn't have enough excitement. I didn't have enough. Um, my reactions weren't genuine enough. And I always want to be 100% completely honest with you guys. And that's what I wanted to do with this video as well. Is that I have not played that many games this year. Honestly, I've not been too interested. I'm 202, 80, and 22. That is just about 325 games played for this year, which is absolutely not that much. Most people around this time already have 600, 700 games played. I've seen people with already 1,000 games played, and it's very, very hard to play against Division One players who know more tricks than you, that have more experience, that whatever, whatever it is, it's harder to play with a team that is just made out of Hut Roulette and Pack Squad's players and that's what I've been doing for the past, I don't know for how long, five, six months. Like, I use a lot of resources into series that I make. Uh, things like Hut Roulette and Pack Squads, they take a lot of money out of the pocket. So I just have not been able to build a team for the longest while. But here's my final team. I want to explain it a little bit to you guys and kind of my mindset of what players that I might be wanting to add in, as well as what players I want to take out. But without further ado, here is the team I've been using for the past five, six days. First of all, Marion Gabrick this year is 89 overall in terms of his Movember card. He is 86 overall, his base card, but his skating is absolutely ridiculous. People ask me if Marion Gabrick is good. Marion Gabrick is a beast. He's the fastest player on the team by far, maybe other than Matt Duchesne, who can actually beat him. Even Brian Boyle actually might beat him with that type of speed, 96 speed. But Marion Gabrick, one of my fastest players, and on Xbox One, he's only worth 220,000 from what I know that's around the average price so if you were looking to pick up a good player to throw on your team Marion Gabrick might not be a bad choice for right now I know the team of the year is coming out so I want you guys to post in the comments whether or not you want to see me do a team of the year kind of preparation video I kind of know what I like I would need to do uh, the team of the year is coming out soon and I kind of have the exact dates and everything so you guys let me know if you want to know about that but next up is Brian Boyle okay so Reason why I like using him is because of his body size and his speed. That's just about it. Uh, his hands aren't the greatest. His um, defense is probably a little bit better than normal because I haven't boosted. But Boyle is just an absolute beast in this game. 96 overall is only going to cost you of, of about 15 or 20k. And he's my number one center. So that means quite a bit. Alright, so next up is Pavel Datsuk. He is one of the players that, you know, are pretty typical every single year. You know, Datsuk is a great player. And he is 92 overall in this card, the Winter Classic one. So that is a 3-point raise off his uh, base card. I wish I didn't put a plus 5 all so I can show you guys the stats. But I'm pretty sure it's 91 skating, 92 shooting, 94 hands, 94 defense, and 89 checking. I I'm just kind of guessing the numbers here. I'm not sure if the defense category or the hands category is higher because they are at a maximum of 99. They do go over. But Pavel Datsuk... One of the guys I actually might sell because he is worth 700000 or just around there. So I wouldn't mind upgrading the whole team a 700000 like more to maybe say upgrading Patrick Kane or Matt Duchesne or Claude Giroux. There's so many upgrades I can do uh, if I sell Pavel Datsuk and I can move some players up. But that is my first line. A very solid first line. Gets me a shit ton of goals. I'm not going to lie, guys. Alright, next line is um, kind of my passing and skating line. I bought the Matt Duchesne 90 overall, threw him onto the left wing. He was not a left wing originally for me, but I did have him on center. And I just didn't like him. The 85 faceoffs he has is not bad, but I would prefer someone like Bergeron or Kessler or Boyle in there just to get that extra power, the extra, you know, faceoff winning percentage in there. And I think Matt Duchesne is a better winger for me, uh, in the me for this team at least. Uh, but then I bought Eric Lindros, 93 overall. He is a center power, power forward. And he does have, I think, 85 faceoffs as well. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you can't really check his stats. But this is the Philadelphia uh, Eric Lindros. The one that just came out after the Legends cards. And he does have a plus one boost, which is not bad. Um, Eric Lindros, I just recently started using on my second line. I replaced, um, sorry, I replaced Marty Hansel 
from that center spot. I threw in Eric Lindros. I was not feeling player of the game Hansel on the center spot. So I thought putting in Eric Lindros with Patrick Kane and Matthew Shane might be a good mix. And so far they are. Uh, they pretty much have the same chemistry styles in terms of the playmaker and the power forward. Uh, Patrick Kane, Matthew Shane, very, very fast players. And then Eric Lindros is just a... Just, Goes through everyone in the center of that ice. He usually gets a lot of those tip-ins, those lots of those, um, just greasy goals. And that's what I like about Eric Lindros playing with Matt Duchesne and Kane. These guys kind of get the puck on net. Eric Lindros is kind of the guy that just gets things done. So I love this line, this line too. Gonna cost you just about, uh, about 190k for Patrick Kane. About 110k. Matt Duchesne's price has dropped a lot. About 110k for Magic Chain on Xbox One. It might be more expensive on PS4. And Eric Lindros, this Philadelphia version, I think costed about 190k. And I absolutely love it. But that is my second line. Alright, so third line here is Patrick Marlowe, Patrice Bergeron, and Claude Drew. And a lot of people were wondering why I have Claude Drew onto my team. And for the past couple years... Uh, I've absolutely hated Giroud in this game. Just a little bit too weak, or there's something wrong with Giroud every single year, even though he's an amazing player every single year. But I have a feeling that this year, uh, this Claude Giroud plays perfectly the way I want to. He's a left wing for me. He has 85 faceoffs as well. Like I could have put him in the center spot, but the same with Matt Duchesne. Just does not really give you enough oomph in the faceoff. If you're facing Taves or you're facing Bergeron, Claude Drew is usually not going to win as much as, like, if the other opponent is really good, uh, it's hard to win faceoffs uh, just with players that have 85 faceoffs or below, and it's just a given. But I threw in Claude Drew into the left wing because his shot and his speed is amazing. You might think that his skating's a little bit slow because it is 87, but he is one of the players that I would think that I would upgrade next because he is a smaller player. 5'11", 172 very very agile with the puck and then when i have him on the left side shooting he barely misses i i highly suggest you try out claude drew he's only 60k right now i don't think his base card can drop too much in the team of the year to drop one of the players i would recommend all right enough about Giroud. all right so patrice bergeon he is 91 overall i put an assistant captain card so he is 92 overall right now uh, you guys know that assistant captain cards should give a plus one boost and that's what i did with, with patrice over there but he has the best face-offs in the game, other than Jonathan Taves, from what I know. Maybe Paul Gostad? Not 100% sure. But Patrice Bergeron is definitely up there in terms of the best centerman uh, in the game and the best face-offs in the game. He might not have the best checking, might not have the best uh, shooting or the best skating, but his defense category makes up for it. I highly suggest if you don't have a penalty killer, Patrice Bergeron is your guy for your third line. I mean, you can add him to your first line for sure. But the way I use him right now is I use him as a penalty killer. And he's absolutely amazing. Not going to lie. Alright. Patrick Marlowe, uh, one of the players that people wonder why I still use him. And honestly, it was an NHL 13 and NHL 14 thing. And he might be one of the players I might be selling off soon. He does not have the same speed as, say, Matt Duchesne or Patrick Kane. But Patrick Marlowe, I might be finding a replacement for him soon. But he is still a very solid card. I think he's about 90k. Uh, but he always gets the job done. He kind of gets a couple goals. He's not my leading goal scorer. But, you know, Patrick Marlowe, always great every single year. With a plus 3 boost, can't really get too wrong right there. And then going on to the final line here, I've been kind of talking a shit ton, so I apologize about that. But we got Taylor Hall, Ryan Kessler, and Marty Hansel. alright? So, I know some people wonder why I don't have Marty Hansel on the first line. But like I said, I use my team like an NHL team. Uh, usually I like to have my penalty killers on the third and fourth line I like to have my top guys on the first and second line, but each line has still about the same amount of playing time um, Not obviously not as much as the first and second, but they still get a shit ton of time within the game Like I check the statistics and I decide to put in Hall, Kessler, and Hansel into the line And why I want to do this is I originally had Patrick Marlowe as a penalty killer the line 3 one and I had Joe Thornton milestone before and I had them on my fourth line penalty killing. And I kind of needed an upgrade because Joel Thornton's faceoffs is 85. And I just cannot feel it. It was just not doing it uh, for at least facing off with people with great power plays like Jonathan Taves and Sidney Crosby. There was no way Joel Thornton was going to withstand some of those faceoffs. So I decided to upgrade him to Ryan Kessler. And then it didn't have that chemistry with Patrick Marlowe again. Uh, even though you would get 100 chemistry. But I wanted someone better to play with ryan kessler so i decided you know what it's time to uh relegate 
Marty Hansel to the fourth line. Still give him some playing time. If I needed him up, I would put out the fourth line. It's still a line that gets shit done. And that's what I love about my team. It just never runs out of energy. I never have to worry about, oh, my fourth line has all bronze players. Now I'm fucked, right? But this line actually gets things done. I could have put like a boost on, say, other players. But I want to try out a team that I built from the ground up with just the coins I had. As well as just having... No boost, well, having minimal boost. Some of these players I already had boost on, like Boyle and Datsy. They already came with boosts, so I just had to use them. There's a couple other ones. Uh, I think player of the game Hanzo, I boosted myself, but that's the only really one I did. And same with Eddie Lack, I boosted as well, because I do think that most goalies are pretty shit. It's just a matter of making them just a tiny bit better to give you that offensive edge. And it really is not that expensive. But we're moving on to the defense here. And uh, I'm not going to show you guys the power play lines or the penalty kill lines. Don't feel like it's necessary because you pretty much can build whatever you want. If you're interested in uh, buying this team, I'll give you guys a price quota of what you should be looking at if you want to spend on this team. But... Okay, so first of all, we're going to get right into the defense here. So Ryan Suter, one of my new acquirements. I actually had Shea Weber in there playing with Drew Doughty. And I just could not find um, a bright spot in Weber other than a shooting. Other than a shooting, Weber is probably the greatest player uh, with scoring goals from the point. Or even Chara, very close to it. Bufflin, very close. But the thing is... He's a little bit slow in turning, and that's what I have a problem with. When I'm facing good teams, he is just not good enough in terms of skating. So I thought, in terms of uh, getting a better defenseman, I thought, let's keep the chemistry up. Let's just get in Ryan Suter, try him out. And so far, his 92 defense is proving to be pretty good. He's got some pretty good aggressiveness coming back uh, on the penalty kill, or, or I'm seeing um, the odd man rushes. He's usually always back, Ryan Suter. You can always trust him on defense. Then we got Drew Doughty. Obviously, very good hands. Um, one thing about Drew Duddy that I don't like exactly is his turning as well. His agility is not exactly there. Very, very good with the puck. Very good hands, like I said. Uh, pretty good skating. Can't outskate everybody, but Drew Duddy does the job most of the time. But his handling with the puck is a little bit groggy. Uh, and I've used him since the beginning uh, because I did have him in pack squads or hut roulette. I don't exactly remember, but... Drew Doughty, a defenseman I like, and he's on my first line. And then we got Eddie Lack here, and a lot of people want to know uh, where I picked up this Eddie Lack from. He is on the Vancouver Canucks, and I've used him for just about 15 games, and I've only lost about 3 games out of the 15. Uh, there are some really good players I could not... Um, just I wouldn't blame the goalie on some of those goals. Uh, I, I've played this game so long, I think I've known like what a glitch goal is, and when I see a snipe, and whether or not it's my mistake for a goal... But Eddie Lack, boosted, has been a solid goaltender for me. I think I paid around 20k for him. And so far, let me let me just show you his size here. He's 6'4", 187. Very similar to Ryan Miller in terms of uh, the body height to the weight. Um, Ryan Miller, I think, is 6'1", 160. Very, very tall goalie, but very light. So that makes him very quick in positioning. Uh, however, he did, does still let in some goals. Which I kind of, you know, I get mad at sometimes, but Eddie Lack is better than most goalies, in my opinion, when he's fully boosted. But next up, we got the second line defense here. A couple player of the games that I really want to try out, and uh, that was Mark Giordano and Chris Letang. Both 89 overalls. I actually might move them down to my third line, because I think my third line is a little bit better. And I want to talk about Duncan Keith a little bit as well, and Petra Angelo, but... Mark Giordano, uh, one of the selling points for me to buy him was his skating, 89 skating and 90 defense. So I thought, you know what, it could be a good chance to try out Mark Giordano and throwing him with Chris Letang as well. I was just looking around in the marketplace and I saw, hey, look, there's a couple player of the games that could have 100 chemistry and their stats are absolutely ridiculous and the price is absolutely ridiculous. However, Mark Giordano, not the player I've been kind of thinking about. I was... Not, not the greatest player I've been using. Let, let's just say that. I thought his 89 skating would give him an edge over most people. And maybe his agility would get him over most people. But I don't know. Something about him. Uh, I thought he would play more like a Bowmeister. Kind of similar uh, stats and size to Petrangelo. But that's just not the case. He is six foot, 200 pounds. His reach is not that long. And I would think it would be a little bit longer. But he's still a great defenseman. I'm not going to say that he's not. 
the thing is, like, I would prefer him over other defensemen. Like, I would not mind trying out a milestone Bo Meester in there, you know? Like, it's really compared to under other players. Mark Giordano, yes, he's a very good defenseman, but he just sometimes does not do it for me uh, in terms of getting back or in terms of defense. There's something about him that I don't exactly like. He might not be replaced, but we'll have to see about that. Chris Letang, like I said, every single year, uh, he is pretty much average and a little bit better than average. You know, he, he costs just about um, like mid-price range. Obviously, you got your high-end defensemen like Shea Weber and then Chara. But Chris Letang, every single year, just kind of average in terms of getting a really good defenseman for cheap. He is always a great pickup. Uh, I actually like using him. Uh, I know that his price is lower, but I do like using uh, Chris Letang. He's always solid for me every single year. But there's nothing to really explain about him. If you not use Chris Letang, I, just, I really uh, recommend that you try using his base card because his base card is almost just as good as his players of the game. And he is 88 overall this year, I think. So you're only getting a plus one boost from the base card. Honestly, the player of the game is not that much better. All right. So I posted on Twitter a couple of times about my defensive cores. And uh, I, I've had Bo Meester before. I had a couple other defenders I got rid of, like Shea Weber. And when I had that money freed up, people were telling me that I had to pick up Duncan Keith, and that is not a mistake. Duncan Keith is a great defenseman. Uh, there's something about his passing, something about his body size that just kind of does it for me. It's the average size, but his turning, his mobility, his... I haven't tried the shooting yet that much, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but the skating, the hands, the defense, they are accurate. In my opinion i mean like his 88 skating is an 88 skating it is very very fast and there's not many people that can beat duncan keith in speed and then that's why i'd like to use duncan keith can't be beat too much on defensively but he does make a couple bad plays but i kind of blame that on just kind of the ai being out of position sometimes there's nothing you can do about that and we're dragging this video onto 20 minutes but alex petrangelo finally the last player right defenseman two-way defenseman 90 overall just a solid defenseman. 60k, kind of like Latang, gets the job done. You need to try out Petrangelo this year uh, if you have not tried him. Uh, the poke checking last year was a little bit off, and that's why I didn't like Petrangelo. Uh, a lot of times he would stick the stick between people's legs, and I did not like that. But this year, uh, it's been a little bit more solid with Petrangelo. A little bit more discipline, a little bit more strength. That's the reason why I like him. Alright, so I'm going to quickly go through the values of every single player on this team. I thought that if you guys had some coins that you had to spend on a line and you're looking for some type of player, I will at least give you the price range of what you can see on Xbox One if you have enough. But I bought Pavel Datsuk. He was the only one on the market for at least a good while. I'm guessing a month. And I was able to snag him up. But Pavel Datsuk was worth about 650k. Brian Boyle was worth about 20k, and Gabrick was worth about 220. So you're getting about 650, 870 with Boyle, about a 900k lineup, just about a mil. I mean, if I sold Pavel Datsuk, I can make a lot of upgrades with the team. But going on to the second line here, Patrick Kane is just about 190k. I'll round it up to 200. Um, Matt Duchesne just about 125, Eric Lindros just about 200 as well, so you're paying about 525k with this lineup here, Matt Duchesne being the cheapest out of all those players on line 2. Then we got Patrice Bergeron, Patrick Marlowe, and Claude Giroux, uh, Claude Giroux just about 60-70k, Patrice Bergeron 50-60k, to 60K. Patrick Marlowe just about 100k, so you're getting about a 220k line right here, very very cheap very good uh, lineup to use if you're interested in using some of those players. Once again, Claude Drew and Patrice Bergeron, I would highly recommend trying those players out, practicing with them. Patrick Marlowe could be swapped out for someone else, so uh, that's up to you, of course. But Marty Hansel, Ryan Kessler, Taylor Hall, left wing sniper worth about 110k from what I'm knowing right now. Hall is not too bad of a player in terms of price. Ryan Kessler, I think I paid about 250 for him. So that's the reason why I want to move him up to the second line because I know that he deserves second line minutes with those stats. And then play of the game, Hansel, worth just about 60-70k and he is on line 4. I decided to move him down like I already told you guys. But uh, all together this is about 310k for this lineup. The cheapest here would be play of the game, Hansel. But honestly, if you really want to, if you had 200k... Maybe picking up a, a Hut Live Hall or, or Hut Live Hansel and a, uh, and a regular Hall might be just uh, perfect for your team. 
But moving on to the defense here, we got Mark Giordano, Chris Letang. This is going on to my line two. Let me go into line one first. But Ryan Suter was a new acquirement. I paid 110 for 110k for him right now. And uh, so far, he's been playing pretty good. Uh, then we got Drew Doughty. He's worth about 80k. So altogether, worth just about uh, 200k in terms of defensive pairings. Eddie Lack, of course, costing just about 20k. Very, very cheap and a very good goalie. Chris Letang and Mark Giordano. These guys are pretty expensive. Uh, Giordano is just about 140k. Chris Letang is just about 100k as well. So you're paying quite a bit for those players, but uh, pretty solid defenseman overall. Then next up, Duncan Keith and Petrangelo. Petrangelo, 65k maybe. Duncan Keith, just about 115k on Xbox One so far. So not too expensive of a uh, defensive pairing there. If I were to do anything, I'll pick up Petrangelo first and then Duncan Keith a little bit later if you have more coins. So this is the end of this team update video. I gave it a little bit of a calculation and after re-watching some of those um, uh, calculations I've done, I came up to a whopping 2.5 million coins total for this team build so i will post it in the i guess title if you want to see it this is going to be a 2.5 million team build leave a comment if you are one of the elite that stay at the end and that is just about it for this team update i hope you guys enjoyed please leave a comment uh if you were here as well as let me know some new suggestions for players i'm not gonna be too um, close-minded about using only this team you know you can make a lot of really great teams with 2.5 million this is the team I was able to build uh, of course within five days and of course I, I could be stretching it out to a month or a year or whatever it is but I want to be also having enough coins for hot roulette and pack squads because right now what at 3.5k I can't do shit so that's what I'm probably gonna do sell Pavel Datsuk and then kind of get on my way with that and this team build would still be around 2 million all right, I'm blabbering on. I think that's just about it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. I don't exactly remember the prices, but first one up is Corey Crawford with 25k. Not a bad deal. That's getting you about, what, 30k? So we're looking for 40, all right? So Patrick Marlowe and Thornton, that doesn't add up to 40. I'm thinking the first offer is a little bit better, but we'll...